Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Miles High Club podcast. I'm your host, Miles. This is episode 26. That's a lie. This is episode 46. Happy New Year! Happy New Year to everybody listening. I hope, fingers crossed, we all made it. Our loved ones all made it. Um, Rest in peace to those who didn't make it into the New Year. But we are here. It's all about looking forward, not looking back. And that's what today's episode is all about. I'm about to run through all the things I'm looking forward to in 2022. If you didn't know I was a geek, by the end of this list, that should be confirmed. Uh, I'm not going to... I don't want to do all the... I'm looking forward... No. I'm looking forward to certain things. It's movies, TV shows, and games. There's nothing else I can think of that I'm looking forward to in 2022. I'm not going to get my hopes up about the pandemics, lockdowns, travel restrictions. I ain't even going to think about it. I'm not even going to think about it. Positive. I, I say positive thoughts. Let's see how long I stay positive for. But it's positivity only for 2022. I haven't made any New Year's resolutions. I don't know if there's like a cutoff period. I'm, what day is the fifth today? No, yeah, it's the fifth today. So I'm, I'm still within the week of the New Year. So I feel like I should still be able to make a few New Year's resolutions. Um, I don't know. They're all the, they're all the same as the, the previous years and as everyone else. Get in better shape. Make more money. Um, you know what? She doesn't watch this. So I feel like I can say it because I don't think she watches it or any of her friends watch it. So it's cool. I think I think 2022 might be the year I drop down to one knee. It might be. I mean, we've been together long enough. I don't... It's, uh, my issue with this is... I don't feel like... One, I don't feel like time... This is where I contradict myself. Because one, I don't feel like time should come into when you propose or when it, the right time to propose is. It's like the right time to say I love you. I, I don't know when it is. But there's definitely too short. There's definitely too soon. And there's definitely... Yo, what's going on? For me, depending on when you got with your partner, I think you're good to propose anywhere between three to ten years. I feel like that's a good range. Three to ten years. Again, women might differ. I'm saying three to ten years. Within the first year, you still get... Within the first two years, you're still getting to know people. In my head, you can't marry someone. Or you shouldn't marry someone without at least living with someone first. Because... Boy, let me tell you, living with someone, there is shit that can happen. And again, you live with them. So sometimes little shit can happen, whereas normally you'd brush it off when you went to bed. You live with this person. So when you go to bed, they're going to bed or they're in bed. I'm, I, let me tell you this now. It's never it's never happened in our household yet. I'm, I'm not sleeping on my sofa. No, I pay for this house and it's bed. I'm asleep in it. We both paid for it, but my money was involved as well. I'm asleep in this, okay? You want to be in a puff? You better roll on your side and put your back to me. I sleep on my back anyways. So I'm not even looking at yours. That's... that's just, is, does this count as positivity? This is still positive. I'm not being negative. Back to the positivity. I think this year might be the year I propose. Touch wood, everything continues the way it's continuing <laughs> for that to happen. But yeah, I feel like this year is the year to uh, step up, kneel, kneel down, kneel down and and begin the journey or the, the next part of the journey. Living, uh, we've got the house, we've got a baby, we've got a dog and tortoises. Like we really, I don't know if there's anything else that we need to tick off the tick list. It's, it looks like marriage is the next step. But again, with pandemics and lockdowns and restrictions, who even knows how long all this, no, positivity. 2022, stay tuned. Do I even get, do men get engagement rings? I don't even know. It's all, it's all just for women, isn't it, really? It all, it's all just for, it's all positivity, Miles. Positivity. So, like I said, um, New Year's, New Year's resolution, build the podcast, even though that shouldn't be a New Year's resolution. It should be a, it should just be a given. It should just be a thing that you do. Build the podcast, make your podcast grow. Awesome. My news resolution is to actually have guests. How about that? Last year, I kept saying, I'm going to have a guest. I'm going to have a guest. Funny thing is, I was meant to have a... I say I was meant to have a guest today. I, I messaged my boy today. and was like, yo, you said you wanted to jump on the pod. Do you want to come on? But he's leaving for Dubai on Friday. So he's a very, tomorrow. Oh, shit. No, it's Wednesday today. Oh, listen, I've been off work for the past two and a half weeks. I don't know what day. How do you know? How do rich people know, rich people know what day it is? 
for me, because of work, I know what day it is because I work a mon because I work nine to five, Monday to Friday. I'm like, today's a work day, today's a work day, ah, weekend, ah, back to work. That's how I know. As soon as I start having time off, I've had two and a half weeks off, I've been forgetting what days are what. For some reason, Christmas doesn't feel like Christmas when it's on a Saturday. So again, I was everything's just been thrown off. So he he leaves in two days time or depending on when you're listening to this, he left. He's leaving slash left this Friday. So I messaged him to say jump on, but he was like, ah, busy, which understandable. And you, you are leaving the country. And I don't mean like he's going on holiday. I mean like, you, au revoir, selling all my belongings and I'm starting a new life abroad. So congratulations, congratulations and well done. And I'm, I'm jealous. I just want to leave the country. I just want to leave the country and go somewhere hot. I love my family. I love that. I love the house that I've got. I love everything. I love my situation. I'm I'm just jealous that he's going to go somewhere where there's going to be heat and sand and sea and heat. Did I mention heat? There's going to be a lot of heat out there. A lot of heat out there. So congratulations to you. But yeah, when it comes to 2022, I... It's all geeky things. I haven't got any holidays booked, so I can't say I'm waiting for this holiday. I don't know. Like I said earlier, I don't know what's going to happen throughout the rest of this year. So I'm not going to get my hopes up and say I can't wait to leave the country. Because that might be a resolution that don't even get ticked off till next year, the year after. Who knows? Who knows? So in 2022, I am looking forward to a whole lot of geek shit. It's all just geeky stuff that I'm looking forward to. It's mainstream now. I think being a geek or being some of these geek things are mainstream. Back in high school, if you had said to me, Mars, do you know what a comic book is? I'd have said yes. If you'd asked me if I know comic book characters, I probably could have named the the, the popular Superman, Batman, Spider Man. That might have been as far as my knowledge had gone back in high school, primary school. L- literally, the MCU didn't start until I was in year. What year was I in school? MCU started in 2008, I think. So I want to say I would have been in year 10. Yeah, because I left school in 09. So I'd have been year 10 going into year 11 when it when the MCU started. I knew what comic books were, never read them, but didn't have an interest in them. And I think it's because, apart from my best friend who used to read comics, I didn't really know he read comics like that. I just thought he had some comics. So I was never around anyone he was open about how into comics they were and about reading comics and suggesting comics. I didn't have like an older brother or anyone in the house that was into comics so I could just pick theirs up and start reading them and get into it that way. Like some people, I I joined like a lot of people did when the MCU dropped. I got into all the movies. I was like, yo, all these comic book people keep telling me to. I need to read the comic books. Maybe I should go back and actually investigate some of these comic books and I'm, I'm glad I did. So 2022, what am I looking for? You know, You, you know where it's going to start, don't you? If you don't know that I'm going to start with a Marvel list, welcome to the Mars High Club podcast. This is, this is Marvel 2022, not just the MCU, so it's not just the uh, the movies, but this is what's coming in 2022 from Marvel. So this is either going to be a movie or a TV show. So I I don't, these look, it looks like the movies are definitely in release date order. The TV shows have all got TBA next to them, but they've all been confirmed to drop in 2022. A lot of these things, a lot of the movies were meant to drop earlier. Like I'm sure it was meant to get Doctor Strange next month in February, but then they pushed a lot of things back by like four or five months. So we'll get to that. Uh, TV show, Moon Knight starring Oscar Isaac. He's going to play Mark Spector, an ex-Marine turned mercenary with a dissociative identity disorder who was chosen by the Egyptian moon god Khonshu to become the Moon's Knight. I know zilch about Moon Knight. I watched a few videos explaining his history. I couldn't repeat that back to you because I've forgotten already. But it's Marvel. I have faith in Marvel. I like Oscar Isaac. I think he's a bad boy actor. He played... Is it Apocalypse? It's called Apocalypse, yeah. Yeah, he's in Apocalypse. He's in Apocalypse. He plays Poe in Star Wars. He's in Dune. I like Oscar Isaac, that's what I'm getting at with that. So he's, that's the TV show coming out that I'm looking forward to. Then you've got Doctor Strange, The Multiverse of Madness, which is dropping in May the 6th. I think, in terms of Marvel movies anyway, that's the second most anticipated movie for me, I think. It might be number one purely because of Spider-Man and it's coming first, so that, that might be why I'm anticipating it the most. But it's between that and another movie that I'll mention in a second. 
You've also got She-Hulk, who is a lawyer. It's, it's So it's Bruce Banner's cousin, who's also a lawyer. Apparent, I think from what I remember in one of the comics, something happens and she gets a, something happens to her, so she needs a blood transfusion. So she gets a blood transfusion from her cousin Bruce, and that's how she turns into the She-Hulk. I don't know whether the show is going to turn her into the She-Hulk and say she's stuck that way, or whether she can transform into like a bigger She-Hulk and just chooses to hold the middle bit, just like we've seen um, Smart Hulk, Bruce Banner, when he was like mid-Hulk, like half Hulk, half Banner. What else we got? Secret Invasion, that's another TV show that's going to be on Disney+, Plus, which is all about the shape-shifting scroll and them blending in, or how long have they been blended in with society within the Avengers themselves? It, I think Nick Fury is a main part of that as well. Yeah, it reunites. Oh, this is saying that this TV series uh, reunites former Shield super spy Nick Fury with Talos, who is the shapeshifting scroll. Directly tying the series into Captain Marvel too. Yes. So the first time we saw the scroll was in Captain Marvel. We then saw an appearance of one at the end of WandaVision and they were there to talk to Monica Rambeau. Monica Rambeau is tied to Captain Marvel, her base of Captain Marvel and her mom back in the day before she had all the superpowers were fighter fight fighter jet flyers, what are, fighter jet pilots? And they were like they were like oh, they were like this. So that secret invasion and that's coming. That's going to tie into Captain Marvel two, which is that this year? We will find out as I'm going as I'm going through the list. My number one anticipated movie, I think one or two, Thor, Thor four, Love and Thunder. So Thor's coming back. Jane Foster, who was in the first and second Thor, but not in Ragnarok, she's coming back. She's going to be taking up the mantle of Thor and becoming the first fe female Thor in the MCU. This is set after the event, event of Avengers Endgame and Jane proves worthy of the power of Milnor when Thor 4 thunders into theatres this summer. I think they said the bad guy that's going to be Thor the God Butcher. So I'm, I feel like Thor the God Butcher is going to, God the God Butcher is going to be going around killing a bunch of gods. He's going to target Chris Hemsworth's Thor. <sighs> now, is he going to kill Thor? And after he does so, Jane goes to pick up the hammer because maybe she's with Thor at the time it happens. Or maybe Thor's getting his ass kicked and drops the hammer and... Jane somehow gets the hammer and she becomes a Thor and then them two start fighting together with the hammer. Oh, there's so much. Because again, Mjolnir got broken. Thor's hammer got broken in Ragnarok by his sister. But then in Endgame, Chris Hemsworth... No, when they, when they went time travelling, Thor got his hammer back and Chris Hemsworth brought it back when they went time travelling as well. Yeah, that's right. Miss Marvel... That's another TV series. Listen, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. What's that? So you got Moon Knight, Doctor Strange, She-Hulk, Secret Invasion, Thor coming out in July. Then you've got Miss Marvel that's coming out halfway through the year as well. She will be featured with Captain Marvel and Monica Rambo in The Marvels, which is Captain Marvel 2. Is it called The Marvels? Yeah, I'm sure it's called The Marvels and that's going to be Captain... Um, Captain Marvel 2, basically, starring all them. Miss Marvel is going to be following... The, she's called Miss Marvel Kamala Khan, the first Muslim... Is that what they said she was? The first Muslim superhero in the MCU? Kamala Khan? If you've played the Avenger games, or if you've seen the Avenger games, that's who Miss Marvel is, so she's in the Avengers games. She actually, she's, like, the main... Yeah, she's the main character. She's the one that sort of goes around bringing the Avengers back together to fight AIM. Is it AIM in Avengers? I'm going to say AIM. That's who I'm sticking with. It's either Roxxon or AIM. I think Roxxon was Spider-Man and AIM was Avengers. Next, Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever. That's going to be November 2022. Oh, rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. I don't know how they're going to do this movie. I don't know what they're going to do with this movie. How they're going to kill off T'Challa. Because they'll keep the Black Panther mantle. I don't think they'll recast T'Challa. I wouldn't like them. I'm sure that I wouldn't like it. I don't think. No, don't recast T'Challa. Think they said that they're not going to recast T'Challa. We all know what happens. So if they kill him off screen, 
I think everyone will understand it's better than watching an on-screen death of someone that's already dead. I feel like that would be in bad taste. Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special, holiday special. That comes out in, obviously, November, December time. And that's going to be just before Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is not coming out this year, but there is a Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. I wonder what that Christmas... I wonder how that Christmas special is going to work because I'm sure at the end of Endgame, Thor is with the Guardians of the Galaxy. So surely at the start of Thor 4, Love and Thunder, Thor will be with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Maybe he'll split or depart from them on a trip to Earth or something like that. And that's how they go their separate ways. And then we'll get the holiday special that will come out. And I'm assuming they'll, that will help like a, a be like a little setup to Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Hmm. But there, that's it. Phase four of the MCU is fully underway. We had four films last year. We had Black Widow, Eternals, Shang-Chi, Spider-Man. We also had WandaVision, Loki, What If, Hawkeye, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, it was a good year for Marvel fans all around. And it seems like this year is going to be another good year. So TV shows coming out on Disney Plus. You got Moon Knight, She-Hulk, Secret Invasion, Miss Marvel. And then, and the, I don't know what to class the TV special as, but the uh, Guardian special. And then the movies, you've got Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Then you've got Thor, Love and Thunder. Then you've got Black Panther. Wakanda forever and they're all gonna have to tie in somehow and I can't wait I can't wait I didn't know what I, I really didn't know what I thought was gonna happen after Endgame I knew they weren't gonna stop because they had all the phases and they were talking about all the phases going forward I remember Endgame finishing and I remember saying to myself I just I don't see how they're gonna top that last 10 years I don't see how they're gonna top the story of the Avengers coming together and Thanos and the Guardians of the Galaxy and all these other people and Infinity Stones. So like that was the Infinity Star, I guess. So like moving forward, we're probably not gonna really see much of the Infinity Stones. And then when we do, I don't think they're gonna be played up to be a big thing because they've been there. They got like, well, we've been there, done that. And also in our universe, didn't Thanos blow up the stones? Yeah, he did. In Endgame, he he snapped and destroyed all the stones in that snap. So the the energy's around, but there's no more there's no more Infinity Stones. So that's a good point. We shouldn't actually see any more Infinity Stones. The only time I've seen an Infinity Stone, the new Guardians of the Galaxy game, it features the Soul Stone heavily, which I feel like it's going to tie into Adam Warlock and Guardians of the Galaxy three because he's meant to be the big he's meant to be the the big bad. Or start off as a bad guy, maybe end as a good guy. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. And what if they obviously did the whole Infinity Stones, collecting the Infinity Stones in what if. But that, again, was all about multiverse. And it was what if. So, I can let that slide. Uh, that was it. So, that's that's as you can tell, that was the, the hype I've got for Marvel. But it doesn't end there. We've also got a bunch of more comic book movies coming out. I don't know why I'm so excited for this movie. The Batman. So there's a new Batman coming out starring... Oh, I forgot his name. Hold on. What's my man's name? He plays Edward. Robert Patterson. Sorry, Rob. Sorry, my mate, Rob, in case you're watching this. Stars Robert Patterson. I don't know why I'm looking forward to this so much. I've seen 15,000 different Batmans, animated and live action, some with nipples, some without... I've seen the Dark Knight trilogy, which is still the best Batman movies to me. I've seen Ben Affleck as Batman in the DCEU. They're bringing out another Batman movie, which isn't part of the DCEU. It's just its standalone own. This is a, a different Batman movie. It looks like a darker Batman movie than we've ever seen before. Um, the Riddler's the bad guy. I think Jim Carrey played the Riddler in one of the other older, older Batman, like the early 2000s Batman. But I'm looking forward to it. Morbius, it's it's Marvel, but it's not MCU because it's Sony. So Morbius is all about a scientist who becomes cursed with vampire abilities. Pretty much all that's to it. Is it going to introduce Blade? 
it should do he's a vampire but then at the same time we just heard blade at the in the end credits of eternals which is the mcu so i don't know how that's going to work i will we will see we'll see how that's going to work black adam uh Dwayne the rock johnson is going to become black adam so from the hold on a minute i'm just trying to see if it says anything black adam is a character notorious from the comics as the nemesis of shazam i'm not dc my my Marvel knowledge isn't great. I know a few things. My my DC knowledge is is less than poor. So I apologize for any DC DC fans listening to me right now. But I'm excited for Black Adam. It's The Rock. He apparently he's been begging to do this movie for like ten years now, and they're finally doing it, or they've finally done it. It's The Rock. Um, he's the nemesis of Shazam. So does that mean we're going to see Shazam? I, the Shazam film was okay. I just felt like it was really childish. The tone of the DCEU movies. So, Wonder Woman. The first Wonder Woman, fantastic. Aquaman, I thought, it's a, it's a good film if you shave off 30 minutes. It's just long. So long and it doesn't need to be that long. Shave off 30 minutes, you've got a really... 30, 40 minutes, you've got a really good film. And then Shazam came and I was like, ah, it's very... It's a bit kid-like. And then there was Suicide Squad and Justice League and Batman versus Superman and... uh Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This, I think across the board, this is my most anticipated movie. So I know I said it was between Thor and Doctor Strange. That's for the MCU. In terms of movies, it's this. Because 2019, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was by far the best movie that came out that year. And my favourite movie that year. And then what helped is the Spider-Man game also came out that year. And I thought that was the best game. That was the best game of the year. As well, so Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. So in the first one, we went into the Spider-Verse and we saw all the different Spider-Man. In the trailer for this one, Gwen pops up to Miles Morales and is like, "You come with me." And then there's, a, there's all shenanigans with a bunch of other Spider-Men as well. So Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. I can't wait for this movie, and it's seventh of October. Such a long wait. The Flash. Don't know why. I, you know what it is. I watch all these geeky people on YouTube and like YouTube reviews of certain movies. And then I watch them do like when they're doing like their random talks and thoughts. And the way that they get excited about like the Flash and the Batman and they talk it up, it gets me excited. Even though I know I don't know anything about the Flash. He, I, all I know about the Flash is there's a Flash. I know that he has an enemy that's called Reverse Flash. That's yellow, maybe. And that in one of the comics, his dad was framed for murdering his mum, which is why he tries to become a lawyer. But then he's reverse flash goes back in time and kills his mum and sets his dad up so it all went i don't know i'm looking forward to this movie though because again i've seen a lot of people talk it up and aquaman i didn't really realize it was an aquaman too but aquaman and the lost kingdom so that one is coming out that's the sequel to the very first aquaman like i said that first aquaman shave off 40 minutes and you've got a pretty good film i'm got a pretty good film right there so Mm, number two we'll see and then all of that you're probably thinking miles are you still talking about movies welcome to the miles cycle podcast this is what i i should do a movie podcast i'm just not well versed enough in all the different movies or nor do i have the time to start watching a whole bunch of different movies and start talking about them but this again i might be missing movies off this list this i'm i'm doing this list in the first week of january things might get announced there's probably things that I forgot. These are all the things that I could think of off the top of my head or that I found when I was doing Google searches. Avatar 2. I don't need to say anything else about that. If you've not seen the first Avatar, go and watch the first Avatar. Such a good film. And that's a good long film. That film is fucking 24 hours. But I can sit there and watch it all back, all over and over again because it's such a good film. So there's an Avatar 2. Uncharted. If you're not into games, there's a game called Uncharted. It's like the male version of Lara Croft. That's becoming a movie starring Tom Holland as Nathan Drake. I've written down Fantastic Beast 3. And then in brackets I've put, I guess. Like, the Harry Potter fan in me is compelled to watch this movie. That does not mean I will enjoy it. Jurassic World Dominion. I've seen the first two. I feel like I have to watch this one. The, fir the first two to me are good films to put on. I wouldn't go out my way to watch them, but if I was flicking through Netflix and couldn't see anything and then that popped up, I'd be like, oh, give that a watch, why not? I'll still always go for Jurassic Park. The first one, Jurassic Park 1, hands down, the best dinosaur... Hold on. 
Hmm. The best dinosaur film ever. Jurassic Park 1. I'm trying to think what other films starred dinosaurs. Is Godzilla a dinosaur? Even if he is. Jurassic Park 1. The greatest movie to star dinosaurs. Oh, Land Before Time's a good one. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. Maybe. Lightyear. So Lightyear is... The, hold on, because I got confused about what Lightyear was before. Lightyear is like... It's, it's not live action, I don't think. It's just voiced by Chris Pat. Chris Pratt. But it's not live action, according to the trailers. This is based on... The backstory that the toy has in Toy Story. I believe that's what the story is. I could Google it. I'm not going to. Um, Scream 5. I love the Scream movie. I love the first two Scream movies. Third one's pretty... Yeah, third one's all right. Fourth, meh. But they're coming back with five. Scream, classic um, thriller, slasher movie. And then the last one I've got on the list is Nope by Jordan Peele. I just love the title. Nope. So, so far, he's got Get Out, Us, and Nope. And according to Google, Nope is an upcoming American horror film. Oh, it doesn't even tell you what it's about. I was wondering why I don't know what it's about. It's just got... Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can get the poster up. I can, but I don't know how well. I don't even look at that in my screen. Look there. There you go. If you're wondering what Nope is, it's just a... A, it's a field with a city or a town down the bottom. There's a cloud floating, but it's like it's got like a string from a balloon on there, and it's literally just called Nope. Kiki Palmer, Daniel Daniel Kaluuya, and Stephen Yuen. I liked Get Out. I liked Us. I like what Jordan Peele's doing. I love the Key and Peele show, even though what his movies are nothing like that, but they still interest me. Uh, on to 2022 TV shows. I'm going to try not to... I've been talking for 30 minutes and I've, only, I've just been talking about movies. 2022 TV shows. Like, Let me go through. These are the ones that are either confirmed or I feel like they are coming out next this year because they didn't come out last year. Stranger Things 4 on Netflix. I don't need to say anything about Stranger Things. Umbrella Academy Season 3 on Netflix. The Boys Season 3 on Amazon Prime. That's apparently been confirmed for the end of the year. I said it was my favourite TV show of last year, Invincible Season 2. I don't know if they're even doing a season... They should do a Season 2 from the way it ended. Spoilers. But I don't know if they've announced when Season two's coming out. I just put it on my list and I'm just trying to manifest that into the year. Um, I don't know why I'm looking forward to it, but I've got on here... Bel Air, which is the, it's a modern day reboot of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air set in the 21st century, but it's the same story. Kid born in Philly, moves to Bel Air, has to fit in. It's produced or co-produced and directed by Will Smith. I don't know if that means it's going to be good or if it's going to be bad, but again, with the, with the reboots, stop rebooting, just original ideas, original ideas, please. How about that for 2022? The Boondocks is coming back. Not a reboot. It, it's it's coming back. It was meant to come back in 2020. But they've said that they're going to continue The Boondocks, which is an American animated TV show that stars two twins, Riley and Huey, and that, that live with their granddad. And they just get up to all sort of sh shenanigans while calling out, like, social issues, I guess. I feel like they ask, I feel like they do call social issues. Like the, one of the greatest questions, one of the greatest questions posed comes from, is it Riley that says it? I think Riley, no, it's Huey. No, Riley. I think Riley says it when he says, if you call the police on the police, is that still snitching? It's a great question. Like if I call the police on the police, is that snitching? They also did, they, they did a whole episode about R. Kelly peeing on someone. If you've never watched The Boondocks, go back and watch it. Halo, even though I'm a PS guy, I, the first two Halo games I played completed was a fan of it to the point where last year during the lockdown, I actually brought an Xbox One and then brought the Halo collection so I could play it all over again. Completed one, two, and three. They're turning that into a TV series apparently in 2022. 
hopefully that's going to be good. House of Dragon, it's a, House of Dragon, it's a Game of Thrones prequel that is set a, hun a few hundred years before the events of Game of Thrones and it follows the Targaryen Civil War that was known as the Dance of the Dragons. I don't know why I'm excited for this, considering how they let Game of Thrones end. Listen, Game of Thrones season one to five is some of the greatest TV ever. Season six is good, but you could, it's still great, but you could, to me, it was great, but you could still see the, the dwindlings and I was feel like they were, they were starting to rush things. People were just starting to pop up in places. Season seven, they, like the, the, the conversations in dark rooms and the, the the bonding that people were getting with traveling, that was all lost in season seven. It was just, you're here now, you're here now, you're here now. Oh, look, we're all here now. And that's, I am going to, let's move on. And then Lord of the Rings. This is apparently a TV, a Lord of the Rings TV show that is set a thousand years before the books and The Hobbit as well. So The Hobbit set like a, a, a few hundred or a hundred years or 60 years, something like that. Before the Lord of the Rings, I don't know how old hobbits live and Bilbo's alive in one and he's a really old man in the Lord of the Rings. So there you go. To me, the greatest trilogy, the greatest movie trilogy, uh, one, two, three, the greatest movie trilogy belongs to Lord of the Rings to me. One, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, Return of the King. I can't think of a better trilogy. The Dark Knight trilogy, I would, I mean, I wouldn't argue someone if they were to present it, but I wouldn't agree with them. I'd still, I would stand my ground that the Lord of the Rings trilogy is better than the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, Matrix brought out a four film, so they can't have a trilogy and it wouldn't have been, it would have, it would have beat them as well. Um, Back to the Future. Back to the Future 3 is shaky. One, amazing. Two, three. It's a shaky film to me. Lord of the Rings. I digress. And then lastly, uh, again, I'm just going to touch on them. If you are a gamer, if you're into gaming out there, message me, hit me up, and we can we can talk about this. Uh, games I'm looking forward to. Horizon Forbidden West. I got I got such a free download earlier last year was Horizon Zero Dawn. Basically, you're way in the future where people have died off and robots were meant to replenish the earth and help us get back together but then they got corrupted and started attacking the rest of humanity you defeat them you think but then something happens at the end of zero dawn which now we have forbidden west god of war ragnarok the last god of war game behind spider-man one of the best games i've ever played ragnarok comes out this year avatar there's an open world i think it's open world there's an open world avatar game called frontiers of pandora they're doing a new Saints Row game. The kid in me who played Saints Row really, really wants to play this, even though the trailer, I'm like, this isn't the Saints Row that I know. Maybe that's a good thing. I'm willing to give it, well, I, I want to give it a try. I'm sure Saints Row was previously, I remember it being exclusive to Xbox. I feel like at one point, GTA was exclusive to PS, to PlayStation. And Saints Row was exclusive to Xbox. And then Saints Row... Oh, pardon me. Saints Row just died off and then GTA just swept over everything. And Hogwarts Legacy, the open world wizarding game that's set within the Harry Potter universe. It's not following the Harry Potter story. You're your own wizard that's going to make your own decisions. It's going to be your own story. I cannot wait. It was meant to come out in 2021, but I feel like they saw the shit that happened with Cyberpunk, one of the AAA games. That just had a shit launch and just flop. Well, it didn't flop, but it had a really shit launch, like a really shit launch for console. So that didn't that didn't do no. It was meant to be. It was meant to be the new GTA. And now it's not even out on PlayStation, PS5, or Xbox X Series X. You have to buy it on PS4 or Xbox One and just plug it in and play. And that's the end of what I'm looking forward to in 2022. I told you, if you didn't realise I was a geek or didn't know how much of a geek I was, that list right there should tell you everything you need to know. I think I feel like everything I mentioned either falls into the sci-fi or fantasy. 90% of it was, Mar was comic books. 98% of that was Marvel. But focusing on 2022, 
Let's talk about what's on the box, the weekly segment where I talk about what I have watched, movies, TV shows, and I share my thoughts with you. And what a way to start the year, January 1st, 2022, then with the Harry Potter 20th anniversary return to Hogwarts. Ah, oh, I listen, I loved it. I don't know what else. Well, you probably want to know thoughts like why I loved it. I loved it. To people out there that are Harry Potter fans that didn't enjoy this, I don't know why. For me personally, the only, listen, the only criticism I personally had about this is I thought it was too short. It was an hour long and it was a nice like reunion catch up seeing all of them and seeing a few of them all interact with each other. But I could have happily watched a one hour reunion about every single movie. I could have happily watched a one hour video like that about Philosopher's Stone, a one hour one about the Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire, Order of Phoenix, Half Blood Prince, Deathly Hallows Part One, Deathly Hallows Part Two. I, I could have just, I could have just sit there and listen to them reminisce about. I would have loved it, reminisce about line reading, like when they were talking about uh, what were the highlights. So again, some of these things I, I never knew. I don't know why. I never used to pay attention to like the actual actors themselves. I was too busy focused on the movies and the characters. So when you hear about the audition and how that they casted everyone, but they couldn't find a Harry Potter, and then someone went to it, someone saw Daniel Radcliffe in a film, and approached his mom, but his mom and dad didn't want him doing it, and then eventually they convinced them, and Daniel Radcliffe became Harry Potter, or how oh, I forgot their names, but the, the Weasley twins, Fred and George, the guys that play them, they turned up. They turned up thinking not many twins are going to be there. And then when they got there, they were the only twins that weren't dressed identical. So they said they just went into a shop quickly and just grabbed the rack and just brought two of the exact same things that they had matching stuff on there. Hearing, um, I've got something in my eye, man. Hearing Emma Watson talk to Tom, talking to Tom Felton and Emma Watson saying that she was in love with Tom Felton and that she really liked him. And Tom Felton was like, oh no, she was she's more like a little sister to me. Like I heard rumors of people saying that she fancied me, but nothing ever happened between us or anything like that. Um, what else? I love the interaction between Tom Felton and Helena Bonham Carter, Cara, when she was asking him, did you steal anything? And then she pulled out her teeth. I love the little shout out. Oh, the shout out to every, every, everyone that was involved in Harry Potter that passed away. One, didn't realize that many people had passed away. That was crazy. Oh, it was such a, such a nice touch. So I forgot Helena McCoy, McCoy, I forgot she literally died last year, 2021 of cancer. Like her name popped up and then a picture, I was like, oh shit. I was like, I forgot she died. In my head, I was literally like, I was literally like, um, Alan Rickman. I was like, Alan Rickman. And then I was like, oh, Dumb the guy, the first Dumbledore. And I was like, oh yeah. And then all the names started popping up. I was like, oh fuck, I kept forgetting. I forgot you died. And then I was just like, oh man, so many people. Um, what else? What other takeaways did I have? Um, I think they dealt with the whole JK rolling thing pretty well. Like, imagine... <laughs> oh, JK. For speaking her truth, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not taking a side. I'm not going against that. I'm just going to say, for speaking her truth, she has pretty much been stripped from everything. Apparently, there's a school in... Was it a school in Essex? There's a performing arts school somewhere in the UK that was named after her, and they've now removed her name and I think they've named it Holmes after Kelly Holmes, the runner, Olympian. I might have been wrong, but I'm sure I saw the name Holmes and I saw a picture of the runner. So that's what I'm going with. But yeah, I think she appeared like three, four times. Yeah, I think she appeared three, four times throughout the whole thing. And even then it wasn't recorded for that. It was all old footage from before. So, uh the one thing I did pick up on is whenever it showed you Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, and Emma Watson talking, I felt like he didn't. I felt like Rupert didn't want to be there. Ron, in my my favorite character, in my opinion, the best character in the whole Harry Potter series, he he wasn't. I just I don't know. I, he might have been going through something. Who knows? But I just feel like. Emma seemed like she was the most excited. It see, Emma seemed like she was the one that planned it. I feel like it was Emma's idea. She seemed the most excited. No matter who she was engaging with, she seemed the most excited about it. 
Daniel seemed happy to reminisce. So like I had Emma seemed like she was excited from the get-go. Everything that happened, she was excited. And I loved her energy. Daniel Radcliffe seemed like he loved it. He loved the reminiscing. Like he loved it. he it's as if someone said, Do you want to do this? And he was like, I I haven't even thought about it, but I'll I'll go. And then he's like, oh, I'm so glad I went. You know when you really you're not really you don't really want to go somewhere, but you you're like, oh, okay, I'll go. And then when you go, you have the best time. You're like, I'm so glad I went. I feel like that's what Daniel Radcliffe went through. Because I feel like as he was talking to people and remembering it, he was getting more and more engaged in his conversations. But Rupert Grint, it only showed you him talking to like them two. I don't remember him talking in any other parts. There was a few bits where he was talking to camera. And I just, maybe he had been in Harry Potter so young and having that stardom ruined him because... I have, well, not out of everyone, but the three main people in Harry Potter. Emma Watson went on to become Belle in Beauty and the Beast. Daniel Radcliffe has starred in multiple movies since then. Rupert Grint starred in an Ed Sheeran music video. And that's all I remember of seeing him. But yeah, apart from that, apart from that, I, I loved it. Like I said, I could have done with way more gossip. I could have done with way more... Um, behind the scenes talk like oh, I did this this and this like I'd have loved I could have watched a whole episode of the prop makers talking about how they come up with the idea of making it the art design like there was so much listen because it was a reunion and it was only an hour long and I'd just seen what friends had done I was like ah, I was like you know what Miles don't get your hopes up just it's it's only it's only going to be like an hour I thought it was going to be like 40 minutes so I got an hour so that was better I was like, it's going to be short. It'll probably just be them catching up and reminiscing about the old times. And that's exactly what it is. I'm pretty sure they 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 probably got footage for like two, three hours. But they probably had to cut it down for whatever reason. Maybe, hopefully, one day they release a DVD. That's like five hours long of everything. But yeah, So, yeah, I agree it could have been longer. Because there could have been so much more they could have talked about. Like I said, I would have spoke to the prop designers, the set designers people that worked in costume, people that worked in makeup, um, the writers, producers, directors. The, oh, I, would have, they, I mean, they did have that, that. They did get the producers from, from who did the, the first two films, second, no, first two films, third and fourth film, and then from Order of Phoenix, finished them all off. But I, I enjoyed it. I looked, I loved it. I loved watching everyone reminisce. I loved seeing certain things and then reliving scenes and talking about this. Emma Watson talking about how she nearly didn't come back for Order of the Phoenix. I think she said Order of the Phoenix nearly was her last one. She didn't feel like coming back. And her and Rupert Grin actually felt the same, but because they were young, no one ever spoke about it. And how Order of the Phoenix is like the coming of age movie where hormones are all involved. And behind the scenes, that was going on. Like people were dating and breaking up just like you were doing at that age and falling in love and having crush it. I would have, like I said, I could have took, oops, mashed up the place. I could have took so much more, but I'm happy with what I've got. And on that note, happy new year. Start the new year off right and subscribe. If you listen, if you've made it this far, I need to do it. And remember my new year's resolution is to do this at the start. But if you've made it this far, subscribe, please, please subscribe. Go on, subscribe. Subscribe and I'll set a firework off outside your house. Watch. Ready? Subscribe. You went to the wrong side of your house. That's not my fault. Like, share, subscribe. Drop a comment on what you're looking forward to in 2022. And if you've got any New Year's resolutions, just so I can steal it. Until the next time, I've been Miles. You've been listening. Peace.